Welcome to Sports from the Couch. I gotta say, it's the stupidest thing in sports. With your host, Mike Mercado. Players cannot stand them. Coaches cannot stand them. Most importantly, the fans can't stand them. Brought to you by Mercado Airways. I'm gonna say it once and hopefully I'm wrong, but it's a disaster waiting to happen. That is so bad, that is absolutely brutal. Hello and welcome in, friends, to another edition of Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. I want to thank you so much for making us a part of your day. It is a mailbag edition of Sports from the Couch here on this Monday, August 9th, 2021. There was a lot of stuff that haven't opened this weekend, so let's go ahead and talk about it. You guys can reach us all over the universe. I'm on Twitter at Mike and Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media, and you can be interactive with the show on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Send us an email if you'd like to have a question showcased here on the show at sportsmercadoairwaves at gmail.com. That's sportsmercadoairwaves at gmail.com. Like, rate, review, and share us wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Check out the video version of the podcast on youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Make sure you guys subscribe to us and hit that little bell to be notified every single time we upload a brand new episode. We're on Roku as well. Shout out to all those at the Rewind Sports 60. Check out Jerry Riles, what he's got building over there on Roku at the Rewind Sports 60. We're on Facebook. Give us a like at Facebook at Mercado Airwaves, patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves is where you can come visit us to support us. That's patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have swag. That's right. We have swag over at teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And if you would like to keep up to date with everything we're doing on the network, anytime we upload a brand new episode of The Good Brothers, The Two Nerds of a Feather Podcast, our sister podcast, The Gone Missing Podcast, that showcases those that have gone missing that didn't get mainstream attention, check us out over on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. All right, friends, you guys can see right here, you submitted some questions. Let's get right into it. It was a busy weekend in the city of Chicago, in the sports world. So you guys had some thoughts, and we are got to get into them because our first question is actually something that I threw out to the universe, the first two questions, that is. And this one actually is more from our friend Louis R., who writes, can and will the Chicago White Sox win the 2021 World Series. So right now, as we speak on this Monday, the Chicago White Sox are 66 and 46, 10 and a half games over the Cleveland Nine. So I guess the big thing for a lot of people in the city of Chicago is to see if this this thing comes to fruition with this this roster, the, the way that they develop, bringing in Tony La Russa. Like there's a lot of things that emotionally are at stake for White Sox fans, and I think if you're just looking from top to bottom on that lineup, there's not many teams that are able to say that they're much better than the White Sox. If you look at that bullpen, there are not many teams, if any teams, that can say they have a better bullpen than you. This team has a fantastic pitching rotation, a starting five. You know, I think for the White Sox, a lot of it is going to come down to experience. Whether this is the year or not, whether this was the jump or not, whether this is just kind of the the destined team to put it all together. It's something that you can't put a stat to, science to. But things have to happen for in sports, especially team sports, for them to hit that next level. And we see it time and time again. You know, the Cubs, and, and we're using this as a local comparison, the Cubs didn't win the World Series right off the bat. You know, they were an impressive team in 2015, had that wonderful second half, got to the playoffs all the way to the NLCS and got smashed by the Mets. And then next year, put it all together with an MVP season from Chris Bryant, Jake Arrieta coming off of the Cy Young. Everybody puts it together. They win a World Series, right? Best team in the National League. They do the damn thing. And if you're looking around for that type of comparison for the the White Sox, it's it's this maturation process because that Cubs team had to lose this White Sox team has lost but has it lost in the playoffs next last year in the 2020 pandemic season was weird right all the games were in one place it was a close series with Oakland there were some mistakes made by Ricky Renteria so it's a hard thing to gauge if you're an observer of the White Sox, if you're a fan of the White Sox, if you're a fan of baseball, if you're curious about what this team can do, 
That's gonna that, that's the thing that I'm more focused on because you can't say anything negative really about their pitching. Their hitting has gone cold sometimes, but here's the thing: they've always had somebody step up, and their their main guys, the guys that are gonna carry them to a championship, are getting right, are getting healthy, and they get right and healthy at the same time. They're gonna be a nightmare to go through. But I've I've been saying it time and time again when it comes to this White Sox team. I am if I'm a White Sox fan. Or covering sports here in Chicago. I am nervous for them playing the Houston Astros early. It's not that I think the Astros are much better than the White Sox. I don't know how the White Sox are going to do against really good teams late in the season. I haven't seen it yet. I think and I believe they're going to be good. I believe they're going to step up. You know, winning the World Series is so hard. I'm not putting that on them. We can have the discussion whether it's a success or a failure if they don't win the whole thing. But I think they're going to be competitive. I do think they'll be competitive against Houston early. I just want this team to not have to go against Goliath so early. I would like them to play at Oakland. I would like them to play at AL East team. It would have been nice to play an AL Central team, but that's not going to happen. So I want them to not have to go through Murderer's Row so early. And... Going through Houston, well, yes, eventually you're going to have to go through a team like that. You want to make it as as less stressful as possible for your team. And you're looking at Tampa Bay, the Red Sox, and the Yankees coming out from the East. And you have the Astros Athletics coming out of the West. It's like you would, I would so much rather go through Tampa Bay and Boston. Like Tampa Bay is a really good team. We saw them in the World Series last year. You know, I don't want to talk down on them, but I've seen... I, in the big moments, in the big stage, when everything is on the line and you're in Houston, that Houston team is not going to waver. They're not going to falter. They've gone through it all. Do you want to go against them in the ALDS? There's, avoid them at all costs. Will they win the World Series? I don't know. Can they? Of course. I, I put money on them to do it. You know? DraftKings, shout out to you guys. You guys can sponsor the show. It's all good here on Sports from the Couch. I'm Ricardo Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. Come on, help your boy out. But I put some cashola on them. I think there's a good chance they win the World Series. They got to stay healthy. They hope, if you're a White Sox fan, if you're invested in this team, you hope that all their injuries have come and gone. But it's, it's, it's going to come down to health, how well that bullpen and that starting rotation hold up. But you got the talent. You got the lineup. So I'm fascinated to see how it works out for the White Sox moving forward in the second half and looking into October with such a huge lead in the AL Central. Thank you, Lewis, for that one, though. We move on to Angel J, who writes, which gets more viewers? And this comes from a, a question that I posed. And it was a back and forth. Justin Fields, Justin Fields' debut or the game one of a White Sox World Series. Which gets more viewers? Justin Fields' debut or game one of a White Sox World Series? And this was actually a question that I posted as a Twitter poll and on Facebook. So on Twitter, I wrote, which has more viewers, Justin Fields' first start for the Bears or White Sox World Series game one? Now, for reference points, for all you who might be interested, the Bears versus Saints week eight had a 22.8 million viewership. While the World Series in 2019 had 14.1, and in 2020, lower than 10 million. And obviously, we know that that uh, Tampa Bay Dodgers World Series is one of the lowest in the like last 30-something years. But currently, at 82%, it is Justin Fields' debut. And we had some comments over on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. I suggest if you guys are interested in sports conversation with a fun community that likes to have a good time talking about sports. A lot of people brought up some interesting points like Angel. This is a good one, but I'm going to say Justin Fields first start, especially if it's on national televised game. It's a really good point. Sean Anderson, Bears starting Fields would have more viewers. And if you're talking about it being a national televised game, it's a point that I brought up with a our friend of the show, Paul Shivari, over at Baseball Weekend Journal. He mentioned that Bears Saints was America's game of the week. So obviously there was a big rating. So he just wondered what was Bears Giants? And Bears Giants was just around 10 million. 
And then Carolina Chicago was just around 12 million. So later into the season, a lot of injuries for both teams. Chicago was in a playoff push. So I, I think it's a, as Paul mentioned in that instance, I think that's a closer comparison. So I don't know. I don't know. Because we've even seen the Dodgers in the World Series isn't the craziest of ratings boost. The Chicago Cubs Cleveland Indians World Series was one in a million, right? Like, and of course, we don't know what the actual numbers are, but it's one of these things where it was so never going to happen again. Obviously not because we got ourselves the Cleveland Guardians. There was just so many circumstances to it. I think in Chicago and wherever the NL team comes from, the ratings are going to be good. But I think there's a vested interest nationally in the Bears and their quarterback position because it's so abysmal. I think we don't even, this shouldn't even be about the White Sox and White Sox fans. Enjoy the season. Enjoy the ride. There's a good chance the White Sox win the World Series this year. And that's a fact. That is in play. But I think we also have to understand, and, and it's something that I've mentioned, and some people have, have said around here locally and even nationally, that baseball is a communal sport. It's a local sport. It's a neighborhood sport. The NFL is national. It's big time. It's not just your neighborhood, but it's civic pride in your state, in your city. It's everything. It's the same thing as Man U. You know, Manchester, Man City, all these other teams that, that shout out to all you soccer fans. I don't know much about it, but I understand the loyalty and how important and how, how much people identify with it. And Justin Fields, whether he's good or not, whether he's Russell Wilson 2.0 or he's just another Bears quarterback that's going to come and go. People want to know if it's going to work out. Because if the Bears do have a franchise quarterback, it's something people in their 40s have never seen. Damn near people in their 50s have never seen. It is a big deal for the Chicago Bears to have a star quarterback. Now, do I know? Do I think? I, I hope so. I don't know if that's the case. I do think he should be getting reps with the ones. I do think that he is the goods to be a competent NFL starting quarterback, but if he's the goods, who knows how this city's going to react because it's never had it, and who knows how it's going to impact the NFL, Chicago having a marquee player. You know, imagine Chicago all these years with the defensive stars, Hall of Famers they've had, great running backs, how much press they got, how much media coverage they got when there was a national game. Now imagine if the Bears have a top five starting quarterback, a top 10 starting quarterback. It'd be crazy. So who gets more viewers? Probably Justin Fields, but I do think the White Sox in a World Series will be better ratings for Major League Baseball than they've had for a long time. Either way, enjoy both. You can have your ice cream and eat it too, my friends. It is possible. Thank you, Angel, for that question. We move on to our guy, Tony, who writes... What are your thoughts on the recent Chicago Bulls moves a full few days later? And this is coming after the, the league was looking at tampering and whatnot, which is funny because the league is nothing but tampering. I've, I'm a, I've calmed down a little bit on the moves, right? I was, I'm really high on the moves in, in outright. I like Lonzo Ball. DeMar DeRozan I like. I think the biggest complaint for a lot of people is just all the assets they got rid of. But I, my... Entire mindset, and I think for a lot of people, it's just been hard to process, but this is true. When you made that, that trade for Vooch, you accelerated this course clock, and you're also trying to take advantage of Zach Levine in his prime. You got some young, some young guns. So I like what the Bulls did. I wonder, and it's something that just, just I keep coming back to, is where they stand long-term in the Eastern Conference. And we mentioned this the, the few episodes since those moves first happened. But realistically, you're not better than Milwaukee. And you're not better than Brooklyn. Does that mean anything? Is that good or bad? I think what, what it puts you in a position where if anything happens, if there is an opportunity that arises, you have put yourself in a position that you're a legitimate contender or interesting team, a competitive team a move away from being something special. And I think that's what they've done. I think full well minus again another season where everybody is injured like this season 
and you somehow get into the the playoffs and you're able to make this crazy move, you're really just doing to be an entertaining team, to be a competitive team, to maybe get lucky and make a deep run, but also to see when Booker wants to leave, when Mitchell wants to leave, when Dane wants to leave. You name whatever superstar you love. If you can get Carl Anthony Towns, whoever. Andrew, uh, if you can get Anthony Edwards, whoever you want, right? Like, you just wait to put yourself in the proper position because your team is good enough. Now, you got to be careful with how you manage these contracts and what you're able to get, you know, give for it. Like, I think what's going to be fascinating is they don't have a first round pick until I think 2025, 2026. But if you start thinking about it, let's say in two years, they're in a position where some guys are due, they have guys on one-year contracts, and there's somebody available. But they still have a decent enough core where we see them as like a 5-6 seed. You're able to do something. But what the team is right now, I'm excited about them. I think they can be competitive in the Eastern Conference. I don't know if they're better than Atlanta long-term. But I do think that Atlanta being built the way they are is one way to do it. But that's the Atlanta market. That's not how Chicago needs to run. It's like a small business, big business thing. The Bulls should be a should be an organization that's willing to take these type of risk because they're they can't. They have the financial flow to do it. That's not the same for Atlanta. That's not the same for Sacramento. That's not the same for Orlando, who have to get the draft assets, who have to hit on them and hope that they do it within the window and that they're good enough that their star doesn't want to leave before they're 31, right? That's not the case in Chicago. Chicago should be the destination of the star who wants to leave at 26, 27. That's where they're at right now. That's where they put themselves at. And then they got guys who are respected around the league. Think about it. They got guys who are respected around the league in the front office, in that coaching staff, and all around that lineup, including now an Olympic gold medalist in Zach Levine. People love Lonzo Ball. People love DeMar. Caruso's got mad love in the NBA. This is a good team that's respected now. They're going to play no defense, and they're going to give up a lot of points, but they're an interesting, fun team, and I like their moves. I don't think they're going to win the NBA Finals, but they're a, whole, they're a lot better place now than they were just a few weeks ago. So, And now that it looks like the tampering stuff is done, so we'll keep our eye on that and something else comes through. Appreciate that question. We go down to Martin E., who writes, Do you like what the Lakers did getting... Westbrook. So it kind of falls into the same tier of long term, I think, in this move. You know, the the Western Conference is fascinating. It's fascinating because can can the Phoenix Suns replicate what they did this year if everybody else is healthy around the, the conference? And losing the way they did with the lead that they had, or at least, you know, having the series somewhat in control, how much damage does that do to a team? How, the Lakers, we always talk about it, right? Like at, when we start doubting LeBron, that's when he shows everybody. At some point, the wheels do come off. I think with LeBron, it's going to be a lot different than we're used to with other people. So that even his wheels coming off may still be top tier, top guy in the league. But but it's going to happen at some point. At some point, AD is only getting older. I love AD. Obviously, Chicago kid. I He's the guy. But you got to go with history. You got to go with trends. Maybe we're going to see a streak now of two, three years where he's playing 70 games each season and making deep runs in the playoffs. That could, that's a total possibility. You got to allow that. But for everything else that I've seen, besides cer- special circumstances of the bubble and a, a one location, and that being its own challenges, I've not seen it in the normal wilderness, you know, out there in an 82 game season. So I like Westbrook because he brings them a toughness that they don't have, and he brings them a hunger that they don't have. How many? T- t- LeBron's always going to want championships. AD's always going to want championships. That's what these dudes want. That's what any competitor wants. But imagine being the ultimate competitor like a Russell Westbrook, and you don't have a ring, and you know that all this greatness that you have is coming closer to an end than it was when you first freshly started it, right? Like those days are closer to the end. You don't think that he's going to do whatever it takes to help this team win, give it his absolute all in his home, where he's from, play college at UCLA. Like, this is everything for him. 
I don't have to say that the Lakers are for sure going to win the, the NBA titles, win 74 games, set new records, but they're going to be dangerous. And if everything aligns for them, and that's for any champion, but they put themselves in a position where they catch a lack, lucky break here or there, they could win the whole thing. They, they, Of course they can. That's a, And that's because they brought in a, a dog like Westbrook. And again, are you worried about the, the Clippers? I don't think Kawhi is going to play this year. With that knee. So, you know, I like Paul George, but is Paul George now all of a sudden going to beat the Lakers with Westbrook, with LeBron and AD? And then what about, you know, a healthy Denver and or a healthy Utah? You got to keep talking about Phoenix. What's going to happen with Dame? What if Dame goes to the Knicks? Now all of a sudden the Bulls and the Knicks, Chicago and New York are back. The Heat are right there. It's like the NBA to me, friends, is a it's in a wonderful place. And it's only getting better because there's a lot of great young superstars spread around the league. And a lot of these boys want to go at it with each other. Some of them are trying to team up and some of them are just going at it. It's a wonderful time. So I like this move. And I think it's going to be a, a really interesting season for the Lakers and the NBA. But we get to our final question on this edition of Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. If you have a question you could send us an email over at sportsmercadoairwaves at gmail.com. That's sportsmercadoairwaves at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at Mike and Media. Instagram, Mike Mercado Media. The show is on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Shout out to everybody watching us over on youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network and on Roku at The Rewind Sports 60. And we love you all who are listening to the podcast version over at Mercado Airwaves, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Our final question comes from Mike G, who writes, Do you like college sports? You don't seem to talk about them much. I like college sports. I like the the pageantry, the tradition. But my problem with college sports, and it's not that I don't cover it, it's I don't watch enough of it to have an opinion on a game-to-game basis, on, a, on an institute-to-institute basis. I, I have a lot of beef. And it's a one-sided beef because, obviously, but I have a lot of beef with with college football just long-term. You know, a lot of the shadiness, a lot of the backstabbing, a lot of the two-timing, a lot of the double talk. And now it might be a little different because people are getting paid. Everything is much more in the forefront and people aren't getting taken advantage of as much. But then you get the stuff about Michigan State and the gymnastic stuff. And, you know, it's, it's, it's dirty because you're dealing with this in-between of – Young adults, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, and just the way adults kind of interact with them. And I think college, why it's we don't really think about it in that way is because of the coding. And it's a real thing and it's a real emotional tie of like, I went to that university, my parents went to that university, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, I met my wife, my boyfriend, my anybody. Your best friend. That's where you went. To, you got you. You got your frat and, and sorority sisters and brothers. You know what? It's that thing. Like there is that emotional tie, and I think that's why it also becomes a little hard to see all some of the negatives towards it. But then you see like the awesomeness of an SEC football game, or or what it means for a ACC team to be in the national championship in in basketball. And we were talking about SEC football. Like, imagine going to Alabama versus Auburn, the tailgating. It's like, I, there's it, there's magic to it. I love the national championship game. I love the Rose Bowl. I love these games. Like, one of my favorite sports things ever is Vince Young rolling to the right, getting that touchdown, beating USC. Go Longhorns. Like, I, I love college football. A, I love the U. And I was heartbroken when Ohio State beat them. I love college sports, but as I've gotten older, I've seen a lot of, at least for me, I've become so much more cynical of just the institutes and the way these kids were treated for so long and God knows how much worse they were treated before and how these universities in general, in my opinion, take advantage of families, not just athletes, but families in general of students. So it's hard for me to then feel sorry or be invested that something great happened to them. I have to be able to you know, draw that line of just thinking of the kids, the guys, the young men and women doing their thing, 
showing off their skills and trying to make a life of it and trying to take advantage of their skills to get a degree and some type of living. Like that's, that's for me the disconnect that I, I'm not able to, to, to shake, but I appreciate it. I love so much of it. I love the presentation of it and I could get lost in a great game, but it's, to me, it's also not like football. My, the ultimate argument I used to make, the simplest argument I used to make, I should say is I want to see the pros do it. The best of the best doing it, but I could appreciate it. Like, I can't get lost in a college football Saturday the same way I could get lost in an NFL Sunday. But I love all the pageantry of, of these sports and of all of them. And I love the attitude, like some of the how, how awesome some softball girls are. You know, how, how, just how much swag they got. And then you watch like some of these other sports on ESPN and you, like it's awesome. And it just sucks too that so many programs are getting lost when so many of these institutes make so much money. But yeah, it, it's a little complicated with me and my coverage of sports or my thoughts on sports, but I don't begrudge anybody for their love of sports in, in college realm. So shout out to each and every one of you for that do love it. And shout out to each and every one of you for joining us on this edition of Sports on the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. This mailback edition of Sports from the Couch. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I sure did. Getting to talk to you guys again. It was a busy weekend, but we got a chance to touch all the bases. We knocked a home run just like Eloy did. Yeah, that's right. We avoided it, but we'll talk about it right now as we close the show. The White Sox beat them Cubbies pretty bad and uh, in a nice sweep, so we'll see how that plays out long term. But if you want a question to be seen, heard, talked about on this editions of Sports from the Couch, any mailbag editions of Sports from the Couch, send us an email over at sportsmercadoairwaves at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media, and you can be interactive with the show on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network to see the video version of the show, along with us on Roku at The Rewind Sport 60. Like, rate, review, and shares wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. We're on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can check us out at Teespring, teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have a bunch of swag over there. And make sure you're following us over at Twitter at Mercado Airwaves to keep up to date every single time we upload a brand new episode of The Good Brothers, The Two Nerds of a Feather Podcast, The Gone Missing Podcast, of course, Sports from the Couch, and anytime we upload a brand new interview with an athlete and celebrity. Enjoy all the games. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We will see you next time here on Sports from the Couch. I'm the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm Mike Mercado. 